Hello, you're watching Alpha New X, and today let's talk about the recently aired Chinese period fantasy drama, Xing Luo Ning Cheng Tang, The Starry Love. This is a 40 episode period fantasy drama that has recently started airing on the platform Youku, plus two different satellite televisions. It is directed by Zhu Ruibing, who has been in recent years directing quite a couple high profile fantasy period drama, such as the 2017th Xiang Mi Chen Chen Jing Ru Shuang Ashes of Love or last year's Blue Whisper. The adaptive scriptwriter is Ma Jia, and the story of Starry Love comes from a novel with the same title, written by the author Yi Du Junhua. The drama is led by Li Lan Di, Chen Xingxu, Chen Mu Chi, He Xuanlin. It was shot from September 2021 to January last year. I've just finished watching the first 12 episodes of this 40 episodes drama. I will give this drama, surprisingly, surprisingly, a two goat mine. Rating on my 7 level scale for now. Let me first introduce you as usual to the story. This is in the easiest way of understanding it, the fantasy version of Shang Cuo Hua Jiao, Jia Dui Lang. If you remember that old IP from Chinese drama two decades ago, we have a pair of twin sisters who are princesses of the human realm. They are arranged to marry two different realms' heir. One is the heavenly realm, and one is the lower, kind of devilish hell, whatever you name it. But on the day when they are supposed to marry together, boom, some Something happens and they got switched in their carriage. They ended up with the wrong groom, but actually who are destined to be the right match of their life. Long time viewers of my channel would know that I said multiple times I have grown out of this genre as a whole. I wouldn't voluntarily go look for stories in this genre per se, but you know, as a drama reviewer, when something comes up, I will always just check it for a bit and then decide whether I want to continue investing my time. So, Xing Luo Ning Cheng Tang, The Story Love, is my first 2020 three period fantasy drama that I'm willing to invest time in. Since I have a significant amount of more positive things I want to say about this drama than the negative, therefore I'm going to put the negative points first. So what are not ideal about this drama and maybe potential landmines for you as a viewer? Well, number one, it has a very old tropey aesthetics in Chinese fantasy period drama land. Given if that's your thing, you like the look of Xiaomi Chen Chen or many other dramas of such nature, then this actually may be a good thing for you. But to me, I have grown very, very, very tired of this style. The heavenly realm is as you would expect. Everybody is dressed in pale color and those light fabrics, semi-translucent, hair flying everywhere, dangling bits, dangling bits, dangling bits. So to me, this is definitely a huge minus. The second thing is not necessarily something that would obviously put people off, but say if you have high expectation of this being a fantasy period idol drama, but still having a little bit ambition of building a very epic worldview, having its own value value system, having the heavy big message behind the facade of things like you see in last year's Tang Lan Jue. So far, I haven't detected much of that. All of its conflict is pretty much on the surface, although it's well written on the surface level, it doesn't go any deeper than what meets the eye. If you're looking for meaning, this probably is not the drama to go to. The last thing that may put certain people off is for this drama, they have a mixture for the leading roles of using their own voice and dubbing. I'm gonna go into the positive point and talk about it in more detail, but certain actors' real voice may not sound so much like what you expect, the type of roles they play. And compared to their previous works that got completely dubbed, you may find it's hard to uh, ease into it, that's <laughs> how I will put it. But once you get over the initial climatization, it actually becomes a very positive thing. So these are the only significant shortcomings I can see from this drama. Now, let's talk about what makes it a two goat mine worth drama at this point, only a little bit more than a quarter of the whole drama. Taken straight from the last point of my negative points, I really appreciate that the female lead, male lead, I think also female second, use their own voice in this drama. Other main characters mostly got dubbed, but for Chen Xingxu, Li Landi, and He Xuanling, I think they use their own voice, which is and actually it worked out really, really well. A lot of people complained about Chen Xingxu's natural voice when they first heard him 
other his lines. Extremely deep, also very stuffy voice. Some male actors have low voice as well, but it has a lot of metallic quality so that you don't necessarily feel it's very stuffed in. Chen Xingxu has a super low and stuffed voice, so he sounds like this <laughs> talking. It's very far away from usually how people would picture Xianxia drama's male lead. The heavenly prince, the Xia Ke, the superpower flying in the sky with white clothing ropes and flying swords. You need that crispy, sharp, metallic quality in their voice to somehow qualify them to be the lead role. Very different from your <laughs> expectation. Chen Xingzhi has this voice. And I admit, I also complained about it during the trailer release of this drama. But once I start to watch this drama, actually, it very quickly vanishes and no longer is a problem. Because first, his line delivery has no problem. It's just the natural quality of his voice is like that. The second thing is, it actually, weirdly enough, fits his character so much. It's like an added element of surprise that somehow worked out really magically well. The second thing I want to quickly mention, which is also only more technical part of this drama, although I hate its color palette, I also don't like its lighting. Very unprofessional lighting, all along, flat, no definition, no contrast, no texture lighting. Although I say I don't like that, there's one thing I would say they did really well, which is CG special effects. With all the magic and all the glowing lights and crazy stuff that people throw out with their hands. You can see that actually in the last couple of years for most of the Xianxia dramas, even when it's not a high budget drama, if it's reasonable budget, they tend to do really good CG. I think it's because overall the companies who get outsourced to do these are just that many companies and they have built up their library, their resources, all their files. They're all using the same type of render engine. Once you do one well, you just do another drama with the same set of stuff, just tweak things a bit. As long as you have enough time to render, you will have a good result. Moving on to the more important things, number three and one of the essential reasons why this drama worked so well on me. If you think this is just a fantasy drama, you're wrong. This is a comedy hidden behind the facade in the disguise of being a fantasy idol drama. The comedy of this drama is so self-aware of it being a comedy that as soon as the plot starts to get into the tear-jerking part, the sad part, usually will be heavily, heavily milked in traditional fantasy drama immediately. <laughs> gonna do a crazy comedy scene right after that that just makes the ridiculous level of the blog go up another notch. I'm just highly appreciative of how self-aware that this drama is intentionally cancels out the high romance drama nature of the fantasy land of lifetimes of love and heaven and the earth and you know like whatever. They're just like so not giving a shit and just go straight towards the direction where how can we make it more ridiculous in the next scene? At least you're doing something very different from others and that makes you stand out. I don't want to ruin and spoil it for you, so I'm not going to talk about any specific jokes which I have to hold back in this review, trying not to share it with you so that you can have the full, fresh, 100% experience yourself. But basically, if you want a comedy, go and watch this drama. This is probably the best fantasy drama that has comedy or is like, is actually a comedy drama <laughs> among every other drama of this genre in Chinese drama land. The fourth great thing about this drama coming from the previous point of the plot and the comedy is also the characters worked out so well. First is on paper, these characters are written as very interesting leading characters. Male lead, female lead, male second, female second. They're each so distinctive. They come together as two couples also magically well. This is a rare one where you really cannot tell sometimes who is the stronger part. Sometimes in one scene you feel, ah, the lead couple is the best. And then the next scene cuts to the second lead couple and what they're doing. And you're like, oh my God, this is even better. And you wouldn't feel basically any moment is wasted. I won't here spend too much time talking about each character because that will make this video super long. And you should go and discover that yourself. But I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed by either of those couples. The leading couple in the heavenly realm, you can 
easily say it is between a guy who is social anxiety disorder sufferer and a girl who is just way too sociable. And for the devilish realm, you have the girl who is the classic perfect lady running into <laughs> 扮猪吃老虎 pretends to be weak and stupid, but who is actually the most ambitious prince of that realm. If you know about BL adaptation history, <laughs> you know that these two male leads before they filmed this drama, they were actually on another crew filming a different drama where it's a BL adaptation. They were a couple, and then in this period fantasy drama, they become brother-in-law. <laughs> And talk about universe's idea of being ironic and funny. As if that's not enough, when you have two strong couple leading the drama, you also have the rare occasion where the male character will be split into multiple roles for one plot in the drama, which just happened after today's airing of the episode twelve, which would cause the female lead to have multiple love stories with multiple different versions of himself. Simultaneously, not lifetime after lifetime. No, no, no. That's too old and out of fashion. We're gonna do it at the same time. Her objective is to make them all fall in love with herself, so that they can all come together and become the male lead. So technically speaking, for the lead couple, their love story are five love stories: the initial version, the split version with three different people. So that's the four, and then finally, when the guy comes back as one, you have the fifth version. So you get basically six lead couples in a drama. <laughs> With four people, I cannot wait to venture into the next I don't know twenty or so episodes where they're gonna have to deal with three guys all played by the same actor but totally different characters and the same female lead at the same time. And I think also these three guys are gonna meet if I haven't heard it wrong. I haven't read the novel because I control myself not to get spoiled. But I think there will be a moment where this guy's different versions are gonna meet themselves. <laughs> this drama has so many little things that you don't. Ever imagined is gonna exist in a fantasy period idol drama, and its looks is very, very deceiving because it looks like just another Xiaomi Chen Chen, just another whatever drama you've seen a million times from Chinese drama. Then it doesn't even look pretty enough or high end enough, and it does vibe with the type of. We know we can't make it, you know, different from others in those departments and aspects. So we just give up. <laughs> we just give up, and we're just gonna put all our energy into making it funny. So far, I am so entertained by every moment of this drama. I haven't watched a fantasy period drama and laughed this much ever. If it stays this ridiculous and funny till the end, this is gonna be my three gold mine drama in fantasy land. I'm gonna ignore all the ugliness, the aesthetics that really doesn't sit right with me, the terrible pinkish, bluish. Color palette that is not my thing. The terrible dangling bits that I hate. The white costumes of all the heavenly people, or the dark costumes of all the devilish people. Come on, that is so old-fashioned. You know, I complain about that again, but I'm just saying, if this drama can stay with current pacing, quality, acting, comedy all the way through to the end, it will stay on my list as the best surprise drama <laughs> in Chinese drama land for a long time to come. That's it. Hope that's helpful for you to decide.、Uh, if you haven't yet jumped in. This drama, whether you should, and then again, again, if you're a comedy lover, don't hesitate. Thank you for watching Up New X. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama.